helpful, as you can tell. Um, but we're, we've also decided to take this opportunity to make sure that we get to acknowledge uh, the individuals that received our awards for the 2019-2020 year. Um, as many of you know, we did not get to have our installation this year. So we didn't get to install our board and we thought that was an opportunity loss. So we thought we'd take this opportunity since we have so many of you gathered with us today to have a celebration of our year, to thank our honorees, to graduate our Leadership Academy. And then for those of you that were not familiar to see how our board operates. And so this is like an all-inclusive event where you get to see it all behind the scenes of the chamber. So thank you so much for joining us. And I am so looking forward to seeing you. If you'd like to make comments in the chat function, please do say hi to people that you see on the uh, screen. Uh, we will do our best to move this right along and get everybody out of here by 930. Um, I'd like to also thank today our sponsors that make these events possible. Our title sponsor, Los Angeles World Airport and Drollinger Family Charitable Foundation. Thank you so much to the entire team at LAWA and Drollinger for always supporting us. I'd also like to thank Lynx and Laura Ware and her team that are on, Dr. G, everybody on the call today, um, and uh, as well as Jerry Jen from the Playa Venice a Sunrise Rotary president, as well as Jerry Jen Law Firm and a board member and the Playa Venice Sunrise Rotary Club. So um, I would like to get this party started um, and begin this show with our Leadership Academy graduation is uh, Dr. Kevin Walsh on the call today. Yay. Hi, Kevin. <laughs> Hi, how are you today? Great. Thanks for putting this all together and making it happen. Uh, hello, all the Leadership Academy graduates uh, from that are alumni now, because I see a bunch of you on the call. It's great to see you all. And all of our newest, which we're really excited about. So hopefully as we go through this, we can give them a nice warm welcome into the alumni of Leadership Academy. Uh, so just wanted to give you a little background on Leadership Academy. It's my absolute honor to have been working with the Chamber for the past 13 years. And um, it has been an amazing journey with hundreds of people going through. It's a seven month, uh, once a day per month program that helps local business leaders learn about not only their own personal leadership, but allows them to establish a stronger network in the community and really build strong lasting relationships. I can't tell you how many people I uh, talk to that are in Leadership Academy and they're like, oh, I still get together with so-and-so and so-and-so. We meet once a month and, and uh, you know, really have developed a strong relationship because of it. So thank you so much. Um, wanted to thank all of the uh, Academy participants uh, this year. Usually we have this on the rooftop, the beautiful rooftop of Marina Del Rey Marriott, but it's a little bit different this year. So. Um, instead of having drinks, uh, hopefully we all have our coffee. So <laughs> we can raise a nice glass to uh, each other. So we definitely want to thank the sponsors of the program. Lori Hughes in, the, in Gateway, to Los, Gateway to Los Angeles. Uh, let's give it up for Lori has been a strong, strong leader in the Leadership Academy from the beginning. Actually was the one that really spearheaded it in the beginning and it's gone strong ever since. Uh, Mike Harriel at so SoCal Gas and Pablo Garahan at Fiction Films. So let's give it up for him. We can do the American Sign Language uh, applause or we can just do uh, use your thumbs up button or your actual thumbs up, which is great. Uh, so I want to commend all the phenomenal leaders for their leadership uh, this year and being able to adapt. One of the things that's most important, um, I think, and this is something that I have not only been talking about with um, Leadership Academy, but also anybody that I'm coaching or anybody that I'm working with or anybody that I talk to really. So whoever you were as the leader prior to COVID, it's, it's important, but it's not nearly as important as the leader that you are during a crisis. And so, the question is that we all need to keep asking ourselves every single day is who do we want to have been? In this story of COVID that will last for generations, who do we want to have played in this story? And we have to ask ourselves that every single day. When I wake up 
Would I rather do breathing exercises and get myself mentally prepared or look at the news and read the news? Who do I want to have been? What's going to set me up for a better success for my day with intention and the way that I want to be known for my leadership during COVID? So let's all keep doing that and thinking about who do we want to have been? Not only who's the leader I want to have been, but who's the friend, who's the sister, who's the daughter, who's the mother, who's the son, who's the neighbor, who's the, uh, the person that I want to have been. Because every, since it's an elongated story, we're writing a page of it every single day. So who you are today is part of that story of who you were during COVID. And we cannot put that in the front of our minds enough. And I will tell you what, the leaders in this year's academy have proven that. So Let's give it up for all of them, and then we'll uh, give them a nice uh, welcome as their names are displayed across the screen. And you can give all of your individual applause as we go. So Nancy Aguilar, Los Angeles World Airports. Woo! Let's give it up. Inez Bush with Otis College of Art and Design. Woo! Carl Calhoun. LNR Group of Companies, Woohoo! Elena Clemente, Hilton Los Angeles Airport. All right, uh, Joel Coleman, De Decron Properties. Bonnie Kalinin, uh, Rock Mill Tile and Stone. <laughs> Kristen Deco, Modern Fresh. Greg Dino with Hawk. Well, I can't. I can't. It's hear okay. It. What do you think the reason is? What do you think the reason Pablo is? Pablo Clarahan, Fiction Films. Woo, another one of our sponsors. Somebody's talking, right? Jonathan Golding. Uh, okay. Golding and Lamar. Can you rename yourself? From Mark school? Goldrup, Weston LAX. How do I get the volume? You are view, Christina Davis, view options. What about this mute? Julian team? Gonzalez. Dale Greenberg, Merkawa Communications. It's a little owl it's, over there. Okay. Nina RJ Grezo, Hyatt LA. Also the speaker. Do we do right here? Yes. This owl. All right there. This is something different. Alicia okay. Magana. Team of events. Test speaker, microphone. Because this is the microphone. Kevin, hold on one second. Had, we are yeah, having some technical had, issues. Like this. Could, oh, okay. turn this Chad, could you mute that oh, one? Okay. Um, right tell us. It's possible too. Uh, yeah. Where's the speaker? Right here. Chad? Thank you. All right, Kevin, go for it. Okay. Uh, Alicia Magana, Kima Events. Woo! Uh, Chris Matsumoto, Jamaica Bay Inn. Woo! Kim Matthews, Fiction Films. Woo! Robert Montjoy, Mo Montjoy Enterprises. Melissa Moore, more money. Everybody wants more of that. <laughs> Wendy Nystrom, Basher Productions. Danny O'Neill. Olivia Patterson Ryan. Michael Yuri Mura. Los Angeles World Airports. Stephanie Younger, Stephanie Younger Group, Compass. Congratulations. Oh, hold on one second. I think I need to put this on for this. Uh, congratulations to all the Leadership Academy participants. You have graduated and joined the ranks of the alumni of the Leadership Academy. Hooray, let's give it up for them. Woo! Thank you, Kevin. Well, that was fun. Um, I <laughs> Very different than being on stage at the Marriott, I will say that. But I just want to thank all of our Leadership Academy uh, participants. It was a strange year, um, to say the least, but they really um, stepped up to the plate and um, did a great job. Kevin, thank you so much. And for those of you that don't know, we will be launching a Leadership Academy 2.0 in November. Um, and I'm very excited to share more information on that. But now I'm very, very, very excited to introduce our chairman of the board for the 2019-2020 year, Mr. Michael Demodio. 
um, to give out his 2019-2020 awards. Thank you all and good morning. Thank you everyone for being here. Um, it was uh, an honor to serve um, last year. This was a challenge year, but as everyone on this call um, has exemplified, we are all and adversity. Great leaders rise to the occasion and concern the board and the staff of Denver certain one and top notch. So celebrate a little. Obviously, we didn't get to do with an with a nice cash bar at the Marriott, but a cup of coffee at eight o'clock in the morning, I guess, will suffice for now. Um, the first award I'd like to give out is the Outstanding New Member Award. And this goes to State Frosty Media, led by David Crown and Jason Phineas. This company has embraced the chamber with open arms. They are great partners and always looking for ways to help the chamber. When having our first virtual event, the team from State Frosty Media went above and beyond to ensure the success of the event. Thank you, David and Jason, for joining the chamber and making the most of your membership. I'm proud to name you outstanding new member for the 2019-2020 year. Great job, thank you so much. The second award is the Public Relations Award. We've all gotten to know this person very, very well over the past year and a half, two years, and I can think of no one better and no one dealing with PR for LAWA and LAX than Stephanie Sampson. The Public Relations Award is given to someone that is constantly promoting the chamber and the community. Stephanie of Lala has been an advocate of the chamber even before she began on the board. She always goes above and beyond to make information shared to all of us and make sure all of the stakeholders is, are up to date on what's happening. Stephanie always works hard to support and promote the chamber. Stephanie, thank you so much for your dedication and your continued hard work. That mon the, the people movers looking great too. You're making great progress. We appreciate that. Our next award is the Hugo Francis Volunteer of the Year. Hugo Francis was a volunteer extra extraordinaire that was involved with the chamber who passed away in 2003. This award is given to someone that has donated their time and energy to assisting the chamber. This individual gives his time, talent, and treasure year. He sponsors almost every event, school, is always around with the smile and a hug for chamber staff. Photography talents for staff photos and magazine covers. Mike Harriel, you offer whenever you can. Thank you from all us for everything Thanks, Mike, so much. Congratulations. The next award I'd like to give out is for Distinguished Partners. Uh, this year, the, our Distinguished Partners are Kaiser Permanente, Cedar sinai Providence. The Chamber would not be able to accomplish great things without the support of our partners. I would like to give the Distinguished Partner Award to these healthcare providers. Kaiser, Cedars, Providence. Each of these organizations, as we all know, are on the front line still today during this pandemic and showing distinguished service to their patients, community, staff, and partners. We cannot thank you enough for your dedication, your support, and all that you've been doing for our community and the chamber. Thank you to all our healthcare members who, despite these challenging times, still made themselves available to support the chamber and give back to our greater community. Thank you all very much. Continue the great job and stay safe. Our next award is the Rising Star Award. And we'd like to give this to James Long of HNT. B. The Rising Star Award that we expect great things from in the future. Someone that has shown their leadership within the chamber and engaged with our team. This year's Rising Star, as I said, is James Long of the great organization HNTB. James has served as coach to the auction committee and a new board member. 
congrats, James. And I think we'll see you one day getting installed uh, as, as in the role that I was in and the role that Jonathan is in. I think it's going to happen someday. So thank you. Be careful what you wish for, though, right? <laughs> the next one is Jim Bunch Spirit Award. And this is going to Joel Vendette. Jim Bunch was a chairman of the board in 1998. He was a man with a big heart, 10 gallon hat, and awesome cowboy boots. This year's honoree, Joel, mm -hmm. is someone that exemplifies the Jim Bunch spirit. Joel brings energy, enthusiasm, and humor to the chamber. He is a fixture at almost every networking and special event and has offered to sponsor our first ever YP holiday baking contest with the seniors at Playa Vista Sunrise Assisted Living, which was a huge success. And I have a feeling once the pandemic is over, coming out, he's taking care, he has taken over as chair of the Binge Network and will co host our Binge Live airing on Facebook. September 25th at 10 a.m. live. We appreciate his leadership and his involvement. Joel, thank you very much for everything that you do. We're, we're very, very grateful for you. Good job. The next award is our Corporate Partner of the Year. Our corporate partners are the lifeblood of the chamber. Their contributions help us continue to grow and thrive. This year, I would like to award the Hollywood Park Casino as our corporate partner of the year. They have proven to be an excellent member through contributions of their beautiful space for meetings and events, as well as the donations of their time. Maria Conchola has worked hard to make the Hollywood Park Casino engaged and involved in our chamber and the community. She chaired our inaugural Protectors Appreciation Week, which was a huge success and her team always helps out in every way they can. Um, I personally appreciated Maria for all of her help and support during my year, and we appreciate Hollywood Park Casino's continued support and commitment to the chamber, and we look forward very soon to get to the table and having a cocktail and eating in the restaurant, um, and we thank you and Hollywood Park Casino for everything you've done. Thank you and congratulations. The next award is the Helmsman Leadership Award. It's one of the highest honors presented by the Chamber every year. This honor is intended to be an individual organization. And this year, I would like to give this award to Joe Coleman. Well, while the company Joe works for, Decron Properties, is a long-standing member, Joe is relatively new to our Chamber, but he has jumped in with both feet. He led our first ever one year strategic vision and continues to offer counsel and support to the team whenever it is needed. Joe is a thoughtful leader who matches his words with his actions. He is a true giver of time, talent and treasure. And we are very lucky to have Joe serving on the board and the leadership team. Personally, Joe, I would like to say it was an honor having you serve on, with me I'm so glad you're involved in this chamber and we look forward to your continued involvement and leadership. You, 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 Joe has a different way of looking at things uh, and has just been a great resource to me and Christina and the board and we are just so happy. So Joe, congratulations on the Helmsman Leadership Award. The next award is the Chairman's Award. And this is the highest honor I can bestow on anyone. And I can think of no better individual than Ray Lamont. Ray, you always make yourself available, champion. You offer so much of time, treasurer, co-chair, the public policy committees, as we all is very active and keeps us up to date on all that's happening. Bob, as a golf cart driver, she attends every special help. I know she has been a great to me, uh, even in times home, made herself available there. Um, she keeps inviting me 
from my hotel. And all I can say, Ray, is keep that bottle in the refrigerator and other. But thank you for everything that you do. And we really, really appreciate it. And congratulations on the Chairman's Award this year. Thank you so much. This is Honorary Mayor's Award, which was selected my Honorary Mayor, Kelly King, has been awarded to Tim Riley of the Marina Del Rey Leases Association. Tim was unable to join us this morning, but we are honored to bestow this award to him. He has served as the director of the Leases for over 20 years and is a true advocate for M Marina Del Rey. In his role, he acts as a watchdog for the Leases and all the organizations within the Marina, you know, many which are big supporters and members of the chamber. Tim is very deserving of this honor and congratulations, Tim, for this award. And with that, I will turn it back over. Thank you all and uh, John, thank you. Well, thank you, Michael. Um, that was awesome. Congratulations to all of our honorees. I'm sorry that we couldn't be there in person to celebrate each of you and Michael and his honorary mayor, Kelly King. Thank you for an amazing year. You know, every year at the chamber, we have um, a new leader. And I think that Michael selected one of the toughest years um, to be the head of the chamber, but he did it with uh, total grace. And I appreciate him uh, letting us do what we need to do and being innovative and thank you for everything. And we will find a way to celebrate when the time is right, Michael. We, we owe you one and we haven't forgotten it. So thank you so much. And to all of our amazing um, uh, 2019 2020 honorees uh, the chamber does not work without your involvement so thank you I'm looking at Maria Joe Ray um, it means so much to us to have you all of our healthcare partners our new members it's just really amazing uh, to have all of you involved so thank you so we're moving right along and we're totally on time which is amazing um, I want to now introduce to you the Chief Executive Officer of Los Angeles World Airports, Mr. Justin Urbachi, to introduce our keynote speaker. Thank you, Christina. And good morning to everybody joining the meeting this morning. Los Angeles World Airports is a, a proud member of the chamber and really honored to be part of such an active and caring community. During these challenging times, it's, it's really more important than ever for all of us come together in support of our local businesses and our neighbors. And the LAX Coastal Chambers really helps us to do that, is providing much needed support for businesses and business owners who are dealing with this unprecedented period. At LAWA today, we are focused on recovering from the greatest reduction in travel in the history of aviation, while also still trying to reimagine and transform our airports. Councilmember Mike Bonin, who I have the great pleasure of introducing today, has been a tremendous advocate and supporter of our efforts to do just this. Councilmember Bonin often says that he wants LAX to be a world-class airport and a first-class neighbor. And everyone always steals that line from him. You should have patented it, <laughs> Councilmember. You probably would be rich by now. But that truly is an ideal for which we at LAWA strive for every day. And one that has special significance right now during this COVID-19 crisis. Councilman Bonin has been a tremendous and caring leader to the city during this pandemic. He's been focused on helping those most impacted by coronavirus, whether it be their health, family, or livelihood that is affected. He is a tireless advocate for the unhoused population, the environment, small and local owned businesses, and the working women and men of our communities. He has authored and co-authored numerous significant pieces of legislation that are really making a difference to the citizens of this city. Too many to mention, but some examples include co-authoring the city's 100% renewable energy bill, and working with Metro to transition to an entirely electric bus fleet. He is a proponent of open communication, always willing to listen, and always looking to partner 
to collaborate to find solutions to issues. Council Member Bonin also has been a great partner in the reimagining of LAX, really helping us to get where we are today, and working with us to plan for a transformed future, one where we have reduced traffic on our surrounding roads, where we partner with the community to reach our collective goals, and where we operate in a sustainable, safe, and healthy manner. Construction on our modernization projects is in full swing right now. If you come by here, you can really see a huge transformation going on. And that is thanks in large part to Council Member Bonin, his continued support of our projects. Those of us who have the pleasure of knowing Council Member Bonin know that he cares deeply about his district and those who work and live there. And you could see that as his policies and community priorities reflect his commitment to this community. Without question, Council Member Bonin epitomizes what public service is all about and should be. I and all of us in Lawa are so very grateful to have his partnership, his council, his leadership, and his support. Thank you, Council Member Bonin. And it is indeed a great honor and privilege for me to introduce Council Member Mike Bonin. Uh, thank you, Justin, for the intro. And uh, thank you, Christina, for, for having me here today. Thank you, everybody, for, for being here. Uh, these Zoom meetings uh, never get uh, anything but weird. Uh, it is still an, an awkward uh, phenomenon to not be together, uh, either at one of the, the, the monthly breakfasts uh, or at the, at the big uh, gala dinner at the top of the hotel with such a spectacular view. Uh, and it's been really hard for so many of us not to have as much of the, the, the warm human in-person connection that we've grown accustomed to. Uh, and, and, and with that in mind, what I, what I want to talk about a, a little bit today is uh, resiliency, uh, not just physical resiliency, but, but personal resiliency, and acknowledge uh, the, the moment that we are in. Um, you know, Kevin talked about it a little bit uh, in between his woohoos. Uh, he, he talked about the, the moment we're in and the type of, of leadership that, that it asks of us every day and, and summons in us. And it, it does that to, to each of us, those of us in, in, in office and those of us who are not, uh, those of us who run a business and those of us who work at a business, uh, those of us who are trying to raise and educate a, a child at home. And it even calls upon that in the children themselves who are trying to adapt. And um, we are at a moment now in, in, in this city and in this country where um, we are experiencing deep, historical, powerful, and, and, and wrenching moments. Uh, uh, some of them, many of them simultaneously. We are uh, effectively in our generation's Great Depression, where the impact upon uh, working people and small businesses in this city and in this country is absolutely devastating. We are, as we are seeing uh, across the state, uh, experiencing decades earlier than we thought the, the impacts of, of, of climate change uh, and, and, and what that is going to mean for not just our grandchildren, but our children. Uh, and we are at a moment of, of reckoning like no other in uh, our, our modern history uh, with the, the, the questions of, of racism in this country. And so we're in this moment of, of Great Depression and this moment of climate change uh, and, and this moment really of, of a new civil rights era. And that has brought out different things in all of us. And so much of it is inspiring uh, and needs to be lifted up. Uh, it's very easy, you know, as a, as a parent of a young kid, it is very easy to get uh, frustrated with running from a Zoom meeting to trying to teach my kid how to, to, to do his online class with classes uh, and, and dealing with all that stuff that comes up. And it's a struggle that every parent deals with. But, you know, one of the things I, like so many other parents, have been able to uh, acknowledge and appreciate in a, in, a, in a quiet moment at the end of the day is what a gift it is to be able to spend so much time with our children 
uh, at a time of crisis and to be able to, to bond with them and, 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 meet, and deepen and nurture those relationships. And that same thing is happening on a larger scale in our neighborhoods and in our communities and in our cities. And I think one of the most powerful and inspiring things that we have seen in, in the city of Los Angeles, certainly, uh, and on the west side, uh, since the beginning of this pandemic, has been the emergency, uh, the, the emergence of neighbors helping neighbors, the emergence of mutual aid organizations, where our local nonprofits, where neighbors are, are coming out and volunteering and are finding out how best they can support one another through delivery of food, through picking up prescriptions, uh, through dropping off a, 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 a care package, through um, uh, calling people and just talking them through a moment of, of loneliness. Uh, we have so many of these organizations uh, here on the West Side. Uh, West Side Pacific Villages has been leading a phenomenal effort that many of the participants uh, on this call and in this chamber are a part of. Uh, we have in, in Playa del Rey based Grassroots Neighbors, uh, which has been stepping up and I've delivered food with them. They are delivering huge, huge, huge supplies of food to family in need here on the West Side. Uh, and we've got groups like Project Mask LA, which is on the West Side, and they're actually making masks and delivering them to, to people who need them. There are so many organizations like this, and they're made up of the people in our neighborhoods. It's not charity. It's actually solidarity. And I've been struck and inspired by, and I'm going to call somebody out here, uh, by the, the support that uh, Lisa Schwab and Cantalini's has provided to some of these efforts. At a time when small businesses, restaurants are, are, are particularly hurt, Lisa uh, has been stepping up as she always does, and uh, has been helping to provide uh, resources and food to some of the West Side Pacific Village's food deliveries. And that is, is so incredibly inspiring. Uh, it's a sign of the, the resiliency that we have and the strength that we have that we've been summoning. And among, in this crisis, it has been so uh, encouraging to see all of the things that continue to happen despite all of the setbacks, despite all of the blows that people are facing. In the middle of this, when small businesses are hurting, Karen Dial opened just two weeks ago, uh, the Book Jewel uh, in the Westchester Triangle, an amazing new small business, uh, an amazing new bookstore. I encourage you to, to go check it out. They've got a great selection. I've got a month's worth of bedtime stories for my for, for my first grader. Uh, and it's a sign of what people are doing despite the struggle and, and despite the odds. Uh, just last weekend, one of our, our area's signature events, the Westchester Arts and Music Festival, a great block party that this chamber supports, uh, went on virtually uh, with, uh, with an auction, with an art hunt, uh, and, and continuing to try to find ways to, to keep people together through this. Later today, uh, I fully anticipate that our council's planning committee will be granting uh, approval to the Cedars project and that that should be coming to council uh, hopefully within the next week or two and that project will be approved. And in the middle of, of, of a huge pandemic, we will be making a commitment to dramatically improving the quality of and access to first class top notch healthcare on the west side. And I've been very, very proud to, to support that program. You know, being resilient is uh, and, and, and nimble and flexible has been something that, that, that neighbors and these mutual aid groups and small businesses uh, have, have done phenomenally well. Uh, you know, I think one of the first businesses I saw that really, really stepped up and showed what a new protocol should be uh, for shopping, uh, for protecting your employees, for protecting your customers that put protocols in place really before the county had issued guidelines uh, is Rainbow Acres. And I want to give Howard uh, and his family a shout out for the way that they did that because uh, it's really been uh, phenomenal. Uh, they were one of the first I saw that, that, that really uh, got it right. Um, the city, I don't think, frankly, is as nimble or as responsive as, as neighbors are. And I think that's why we have seen the rise of mutual aid organizations. Uh, and most of the things that, that, that the city has done have been in response to ideas from you and from neighbors. I was really uh, very glad to be able to 
uh, initiate in the city the alfresco program, uh, which has allowed uh, some restaurants to, to operate uh, on sidewalks or in their parking lots or open parklets. We have had a tremendous, tremendous response to that on the west side. Uh, we have well over uh, 100 restaurants that are participating. Uh, and for some of them, it has meant the, the, the difference between, between staying open and closing. Um, you know, we have done uh, things in terms of small business loans and small business grants and tried to create a program with the county, LA Cares, to help people walk through some of the bureaucracy uh, they face, even in, in accessing some of the, the, the federal programs. Um, and we have opened up a number of our parks, actually, for LAUSD as remote learning centers for, for our students. Uh, but it is certainly not enough. And um, we are facing pretty stark and bleak uh, a financial situation in the city. We're probably gonna have to cut about $400 million out of our budget. Uh, and one of the things we have to do in that is prioritize uh, for protection from cuts, those things which support resiliency. So I'm glad to work with the chamber to help identify other things we can be doing for small businesses uh, and for neighborhoods. Um, it's vitally important. And um, a lot of times it is government getting out of the way it's cutting some red tape, it's removing some bureaucracy, uh, uh, you know, telling DOT uh, or, or building and safety, your priority right now should not be enforcing against a business that has a, a sandwich board up saying we are open for business or you can uh, come by and pick up your food here. That's not where our resources should be doing. So if there are things we need to do to, to, to get the city to do or to not do, uh, uh, please let us know. I also want to highlight in the middle of this, in terms of resiliency and in terms of focus, uh, the work that LAX is doing. I thank Justin, uh, not just for the, the very kind intro, but for the, uh, the, the phenomenal work that, that LAX is doing in, uh, in, in transforming that airport, not just in terms of the, the physical infrastructure that we have all been invested in for a generation in seeing modernization, uh, and improvement of that airport, but also in the way the airport operates. Before I even touch on the, the, the physical infrastructure, I think it's important to note that, that just as I, I mentioned and lifted up Howard and, and, and Rainbow Acres for the, the, the incredible way that they established the right protocol for, uh, for, for sort of retail shopping, LAX has really done that for airports across the country. Uh, they, have, they have stepped up, they have been first in the line, they have been a pace setter, uh, and they have shown people how to do it. Uh, it's going to be tough to make it work, I think, uh, when we start scaling up, but that's a challenge that I know that Justin, and I know his team, and I know that LAX is up for. And I think they deserve uh, some, some real serious recognition and, and acclaim for that, and I, I personally uh, really appreciate it. And um, uh, what the, the airport has continued to do while this pandemic has been going on is uh, move forward on all the modernization projects. We were all very, very worried. Uh, I, don't, I think Justin probably heard it from me uh, every time we spoke about what the impacts would be on passengers and neighbors of the construction at the airport while you built essentially a whole new airport uh, in the middle of a, a residential and business area while that airport was functioning. That was a tremendous challenge. And, you know, it's, it's horrible what has was happened to, to air travel, but it has given an opportunity for a lot of the construction work there uh, to proceed without impact and, and to stay on schedule. And it's really, really been inspiring to see uh, the progress with the automated people mover, uh, which is going to be a real game changer at that airport. Uh, to see the uh, the uh, work on the consolidated rental car center, the uh, the the Lawa PD uh, headquarters, which is going, uh, and there's also been significant work done on the the, the, the Propo project, uh, which uh, once that's completed and we move forward on the north side, uh, that will be open space and potentially a, a dog park for for the community. Um, it's been a, a lot of great stuff. Metro has not done as well, I will say, as LAX has been a little bit of a slowdown in the Crenshaw line, uh, but uh, that's uh, back on track and, and, and will be happening uh, uh, soon. But LAX has really, really uh, been uh, doing a phenomenal job. Uh, and I want to particularly thank uh, Christina and the chamber and, and uh, the, the, the chamber's members. 
this has been a chamber, uh, I've known this chamber for a very, very long time. I was, I was really, uh, 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 very, it was very nice to, to hear that there's a, a, an award uh, in honor of uh, Jim Bunch, who was a, a, a wonderful guy. I can't believe it's been uh, over two decades now, I guess, since, uh, since, since he passed. Uh, but this chamber has always been a vital, vital part of this community. And over the past decade in particular, this chamber has been um, an innovator. Uh, has been a place that has been uh, willing to lean forward, that has been uh, creating efforts to bring people together. And uh, that is really tough during a time of a pandemic when we are separated. And I want to thank and salute Christina and her incredible team uh, for keeping that mission alive and keeping that spirit alive and, and, and keeping this chamber going. Um, we are not looking at uh, the light at the end of the tunnel is not right in front of us. Uh, we have a long way to go on the struggles that we're facing in terms of this public health crisis, uh, in terms of the economic catastrophe that we're in the middle of, in terms of the climate challenges we're facing, in terms of the fiscal crisis the city is facing. And we have a long way to go to work through uh, in, in any serious way, this, this, this moment of, of, of reckoning with racism that, that we finally have here in this country. We have a long way to go and it's gonna be a hard a hard road uh, for, for all of us. Uh, but what I know is that we are absolutely capable of rising to this moment and meeting this moment. I know that this chamber, I know that the members of this chamber, I know that the, the neighborhoods that I represent and the community leaders that I have the, the privilege to work with are, are focused and determined uh, and they're strong. And that there, if there is ever uh, a, a time and a community where I have seen the, the, the ability and the inspiring spirit of cooperation, uh, it has been this one. And uh, together, working together, neighbor to neighbor, small business to small business, government to neighborhood, we are going to get through this. We are going to survive these moments. We are going to educate our kids. We're going to help our struggling families. We are going to do everything we can to keep our small businesses afloat. Uh, and we're going to come out of this stronger and better. So I thank you very much for the opportunity to say a few words today. And I thank you as always for the great work you do and the tremendous partnership. Thank you, Mike. Um, Mike, would you mind uh, installing our board of directors since we didn't get to do that? Yes. Let me go to my phone and find the oath. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. Uh, so to uh, the officers, uh, today it is my pleasure to swear in the 2020-2021 LAX Coastal Chamber of Commerce Chairman John Lawner and his Board of Directors. Board members, please raise your right hands. Okay. The office to which you have been elected is one of dignity and importance. You are charged with the duties of furthering the objectives of the Chamber. With the mission, policy, and bylaws as your guide, you must exercise the functions of the office with which you are entrusted. You are charged with governing this organization and this role. Every person shall be heard, every matter considered, and the best opinion shall prevail through the express will of the majority of the board. Please accept this charge by saying, I do. I do. Uh, I assume you all said it. I, heard I do. <laughs> they did. They, they were on mute, but they said Thank it. Thank you, I saw you spoke for everybody. Uh, so <laughs> congratulations. It's my pleasure to present the 2020-2021 Chair of the LAX Coastal Chamber, John Lawner, and welcome his Board of Directors to their posts. You are now officially installed. I wish you the best as you lead the Chamber and our business community through this challenging time. Yay! We're all official. Congratulations, John. You now are officially chairman of the board. It is, it is done. Um, so thank you so much, Councilman Bond, and thank you for always making the time um, to see us and speak with us. And uh, we will look forward to working with you to support our small business and our business community. Um, we, we are up for the task. So I will make sure to reach out to Matt um, so that we can have some conversations. Um, before you leave, we have a little special um, announcement to make. So Kelly, would you mind rolling our video? Hi, 
I'm Sean Moore, the guest experience manager of this amazing new independent bookstore located right here in the heart of Westchester. Welcome, friends, to the Book Jewel. This community bookstore is an actual dream come true for our owner, Karen Dial, and she wishes that she could be with us today for this meeting. So on behalf of her and everyone at Drollinger Properties, the Drollinger Family Charitable Foundation, and the Book Jewel, we want to thank Councilman Mike Bonin for his time today and for helping us to cut the blue ribbon at our grand opening. His support and kindness meant a lot to Karen and to all of us in attendance. As a token of our appreciation, the Chamber will be donating several books from our store in the Councilman's name to local schools. These books will be distributed at one of the Chamber's upcoming Education Committee meetings. Thank you to everyone for joining us today, and I sincerely hope to see you all soon at the Book Jewel. That's awesome. Thank you. Shop at the Book Jewel. Not only is it great local, but they have a tremendously diverse and eclectic selection of books that really reflects the diversity of Los Angeles. It's really a phenomenal place. Thank you so much, Mike. And I think I saw Karen on the call. Karen, are you on? There you are. Hi. Hi. Do you want to say anything? I am. I'm here. Thank you. Your book, your bookstore is beautiful. And for those of you that haven't had the opportunity, it really is a treat to go there and just get away. So go check out the book, Jewel. It's amazing. And Karen, thank you for all your support of the Thank community. you. And thank you, Sean. You did such a beautiful job on that video. I just love it. Thank you. I'm in Montana right now. So um, I'm so grateful that I was able to join in this morning and see, I meet everyone. They haven't met me, but I've met them now. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you, Karen. Thank you so much, Drollinger. Thank All you. right. So since Jonathan Lawner is now official, um, John, would you like to take over and start running the show? Sure, as long as I can unmute myself. <laughs> well, that would be a good start. <laughs> um, yes, uh, I, will, I will be brief um, and roll through this agenda. Um, but I, I also wanted to thank Council Member Bonin, um, for all the support he gives the chamber, as well as for being here this morning. I know he, like I, both have kids and we are ditching elementary school this morning to be here. So I really appreciate his attendance and the fact that both of us know that this will go on our permanent elementary school record for ditching Thursday, September 17th. Um, but in all seriousness, uh, COVID has changed how all of us manage our businesses. Uh, it's changed the manner in which we interact with our staff and our vendors. And really, as everyone's talked about this morning, it, it has changed the way we interact with you, normal people, on a daily basis. And as stressful and concerning as it has been, as it will continue to be, it's forced us to re-examine our business models, both individually and all of our companies, as well as at the chamber. And because of that, I think you'll be seeing a lot over the next year as part of an evolving chamber that we're focused on both internally, er, internally as well as externally. Internally, I want to thank our executive committee. They have been phenomenal in hours, both at our last fiscal year and this fiscal year, and our staff in collectively focusing on creating structural changes that are necessary to allow you, our members, and our staff to better respond to the this environment and allow for this chamber to continue to be successful this year and well into the future. We have new standing rules for our board, we have new committee structures, and an enhanced focus on bringing young leaders cultivated through our Leadership Institute into the fray, empowering all of you to lead, speak your voice, join the conversation, and understand what our business community is facing. Externally, as you've not undoubtedly seen, we've changed to a virtual model of programming. And while it has changed our ability to interact in person, it has also allowed us to increase the amount of programs that are available to you, our members. Virtual meetings like today's annual meeting, our State of series bringing monthly updates on business sectors that are vital and integral to the Westchester community, our SBA groups focused on business certification, growth and support, as well as our evolving programs like Leadership 2.0. And lastly, as part of this evolution, 
we've modified the role of a position that has seen great leaders cycle through our organization. A position that has typically been a focal point for that touch point between our local businesses and the chamber. But with the changing dynamic of public interaction, that position must also change. And that position is our honorary mayor position. We've brought that position more into the board and um, chamber as part of an ex officio part of our board. And I will be relying on our mayor as part of our network of business voices, listening to him to make sure we're responding quickly and effectively in the face of business, political and community challenges, bridging the gaps that COVID has provided and making sure that all of us have as many people engaged in looking out for you, our members, as we can. Uh, I know I've announced this previously in smaller groups, but I can think of no better person right now and in the face of what Westchester is going through to hold that position than one of our esteemed former LAX chairman, Mr. Charles Bassett. Thanks, Jonathan. It is truly an honor to continue to be a part of the chamber. I look forward to making a valuable contribution at this difficult time and I look forward to working with all of you to, you know, making the chamber the great place it always has been. So thank you so much for this honor. It really means a lot to me. So in about five minutes, I will be sending you multiple calendar invites for eight hour blocks each day of the day. So it will be, <laughs> it will be fun to work through this with you. I really appreciate you um, stepping up to this challenge. Uh, and thank you very, very much. Um, as difficult as this past year has been and as challenging as the upcoming year will undoubtedly be, this chamber, your chamber, is continuing to grow and evolve and focus on providing you with the support you need as a business owner, as a community member, as our neighbor to thrive. And with that, I will drop straight into the, the meat of the agenda, which is our typical um, board meeting. So it's gonna be a little bit different, trying to get you out of here in about 10 minutes. Uh, I'm gonna bundle a couple things together. Um, the minutes will be bundled with our treasurer's report. So Joe, if I could turn this over to you to give a brief overview of where we are financially as a chamber, um, that would be ideal. Thank you, John. Um, so on my agenda for this morning, there are four things I'd like to go over. Um, one, you know, uh, I'm Joe Coleman. I'm the treasurer for 2020-2021 fiscal year. Um, on the agenda today is just talk a little bit about the chamber and how we function. Uh, an overview of the performance for 2019 to 2020. Uh, uh, reflect on uh, the budget that we put together for 2020-2021 and then talk about the financial performance year to date and go over August financials. So um, let's get right into it. A little bit about uh, the chamber. We do not run on a calendar year. So calendar years typically January through December where financials run. The chamber runs on a fiscal year and that's July through June. The chamber is a 501c6 nonprofit organization, which means um, we're here to support the businesses, but we do not take uh, any uh, or receive any money from government agencies. Uh, we are privately funded through the generosity of our partnerships. That's why all this conversation and celebration of our partnerships early on is so important to the chamber and, and we're so thankful um, for all the support that, that our partners give us. Um, the chamber has a bookkeeper, Susie Rhodes, um, who's been with us for 12 years and Christina's worked hand in hand with her for 12 work years. She prepares all the reports and reconciles all the accounts, um, which made it very easy for me to take this job. Um, so all I got to do is report on it. Um, the other thing that made it easy uh, is that we have a very healthy balance sheet. Um, I think it's important that all the chamber members here know um, the foresight, the discipline, um, the vision that the LAX chambers had over many, many years um, when it comes to setting aside reserves. Uh, the chamber uh, started with setting aside reserves a little bit at a time. That uh, balance sheet grew to a little over $140,000. At that point in time, there was a decision to be made uh, and they decided to put it in an investment account with Raymond James to get a little bit more interest. That account now has over $220,000 in it. Um, 
And, and the reason why that's important is, is because we know, we know that it, there was going to be a rainy day eventually, and, and COVID has been difficult. And it's been difficult on a lot of our members, but um, there's been terms like leadership thrown around. Well, having the foresight and vision is an incredible leadership. There's been terms um, discussed on this call about resiliency. Well, the chamber is here, and it's here to stay. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about some scary numbers um, later on, but you'll see that, that we are here to stay and we're in it for the long haul. Um, with the, the, the power of our partnerships, um, we'll continue to be able to create content, to create support. Um, uh, we'll be able to allow our chamber members that ability um, of, of, of a bounce back of that resiliency and we're here to support that. So. Um, it, it's good to know the financial strength of the chamber, and, and I think um, all of you should just, you know, that, that should perk up your interest when, when we're going over the reports. Overview of last year's 2019-2020 financial report. Um, in general, we were having an incredibly strong year. Um, the budget was conservative. Uh, I, I, we actually budgeted to be a shortfall of $16,000 and change for the year. And with all of our partnerships and our programming, uh, we were in a position to uh, have an incredible year and, and really um, uh, beat our budget by a, a wide, wide margin. Um, as we all know, COVID hit and a lot of our programs uh, were delayed or, or canceled um, earlier this year or later in the chamber's fiscal year. And, um, and that uh, hurt our, our budget and we had some shortfalls, but overall the chamber came out a positive $24,000 for the year. Uh, and what that means for the chamber is that we were positive $40,000 variance um, to what we had budgeted for the year. So not only did we end up in the black, um, but uh, we, we um, beat our budget by $40,000, which, which is an incredible job and, um, and a, a testament to the strength of the team and their ability to uh, adapt with the times and create different programming and being thoughtful about expenses. Um, you know, the team had to make difficult decisions with expenses and, um, and through that being, uh, th they were able to maintain that, that uh, nice positive variance for ourselves. The 2020, 2021 budget, um, it's not pretty, right? Um, I'll start with membership. We we have um, we have a line item in our budget for membership and renewals, and we know that our members are uh, having difficult times. And so we are conservative with how we budget. We think we offer great value, but we know uh, a lot of our members um, want to continue with us, but but may have um, challenges right now. So we um, cut down our our membership and our renewal budget by a significant margin. Uh, we, we think we will be able to beat that, um, and, um, and we've seen that in August already, but that is an area where we reduce the budget and we're, we're conservative with that. And that doesn't mean we're going to lose all of our members. I want to make that clear. It means that we may not be able to bring in all the revenue from our members. And so we're thoughtful about our approach there. Um, and, and we were conservative with our budget because, uh, we want to make sure we're able to plan and, um, and think about our cash position and when we need to draw from certain accounts. Uh, the other thing that, that happened is program income. Program income and program expenses are not a one-to-one. -one. Uh, through our, our partnerships and the, the donations that, that, that come in and the sponsorships that come in, uh, typically we have a, a surplus, which, which take care of a lot of the other expenses for the chamber. And so, um, now, a majority of our programming is going to be online um, and different, and um, and so uh, we cut out all program income this year, but we also cut out all program expenses. But we, we don't see that surplus, which which um, which hurts the bottom line as well. Um, there are uh, salaries. Yeah, I talked about expenses. We we did cut a PR position in the chamber. Um, we thought that was important to do and be thoughtful about our approach there. Um, 
And so net income, when it's all said and done, is, is down significantly. Um, I talked about being in the black and being positive in 2019 and 2020. We're budgeting, uh, you know, a negative $136,000 shortfall for the year. Now, that number is scary, but we think we'll beat it. Um, and when we go into our year to date, you'll see that, that we are beating it. But um, we want to we wanna go into this eyes wide open. We want to go into it realistic. We want to be fiscally responsible like all of our predecessors have done to, to put us in this position of strength. So um, we're hoping programming comes back. Uh, Christina and the team have done a great job of, of virtual programming where um, uh, we offer value to to the chamber members, but um, but but things are different. So we will we will adapt and we will continue to look at our budget. But we're in position, even with a shortfall this year, to absolutely cover that. We're here to stay, and we're here to continue to support our members and and be the chamber that that um, all of you have come to know and love and and and. Um, and be a part of. So um, that is the 2020, 2021 budget overview. I didn't want to go too granular, but wanted to get a little bit of feedback. So after all the doom and gloom of the 2020, 21 budget, I'll, I'll just talk about where we are today. Uh, August, 2020 financials, we are ahead of budget. Not only are we ahead of budget, we are in the black for um, the fiscal year in the first two months. Um, we are, um, positive year to date by $9,700. Um, our sponsorships continue to be strong. Um, uh, we, we circulated uh, feelers out there on, on where our members uh, would still, you know, give sponsorships and be a part of programs. And we've got excellent response. Uh, our membership continues to be strong and we are positive, not only in sponsorship, but membership. Um, we've maintained a very disciplined approach to expenses, and that has put us um, in the black for the year and um, at a net operating income of just shy of $10,000, like I said. So um, all positive. We, we still know that there may be um, some challenging times ahead, uh, but uh, feel good about the position that we're in right now and, and feel good about um, continuing to be part of this resiliency part of this leadership, part of this, this chamber that supports businesses and really feels like a family and we're all in it together. And, and I think that's important that we can lean on each other during this time. It's not only about business health, it's about you know, some mental health out there. I think that we all support each other in so many ways and, and, um, and in many ways the chamber becomes a refuge during these times and it's excellent. So that being said, that is the chamber's uh, treasurer's report. So what I'd like to do, if everyone is okay with it, is bundle both our minutes and our chamber's report together. Um, so we'll need a motion to do that. And I don't think I can see everyone. So I'll get Cody as the first and Jerry Jen as the second. All those in favor? Any opposed? And any abstentions? Um, great, thank you very much. Um, Tom, uh, if you want to give a brief overview on new members. Oh, thank you very much, Jonathan. I wasn't sure if we were doing that today, but I'm happy to say <coughs> that we have uh, eight new members uh, to, to, in, to welcome today. Uh, I'm very pleased, as you know, Joe said, that we are uh, beating expectations our COVID uh, era expectations. And that really is a hats off and a tribute to the staff's hard work. And of course, uh, just a great chamber and it's a membership that's helping us recruit new members. Uh, with that, there's not much more to say other than uh, let's uh, vote them in. That's fantastic. Um, and, and again, I wanna thank both Tom and Joe. Um, they're both very modest on these calls. But uh, as you have seen in these board reports and what you don't see is the amount of time that they spend with the chamber, uh, it's a testament to them and their coordination with staff that this chamber is doing as well as it is. So I really wanna make sure that they get the kudos they deserve um, 
And with that, uh, if we have a motion to receive and file Tom's report, um, I'll take Carl with the first. And James with the second. All those in favor? Uh, any opposed? There you go. Um, our, our last main item on our agenda today is the public policy report. Uh, we have a couple items on there, some important ones um, as well with regard to propositions that are on the November ballot. So if I could turn it over to Ray and Dave uh, to describe those and, and why the chamber has recommended the positions they have, uh, I'll turn it over to you. Good morning, everyone. Um, then I want to thank John for having stepped in for both Ray and I this month uh, to run the Public Policy Committee. So thank you, Jonathan, for doing that. Um, we have four items on your agenda this morning. Um, the first of those is the SOCAS gal, gas motion uh, to close the uh, field that's here in Playa del Rey. Uh, the chamber has remained consistent in being opposed to that. We have just recently experienced having uh, significant parts of the state have their power shut off. Uh, the gas fields are essential to being able to continue to provide uh, power locally uh, to our communities. Uh, and we support our member SoCal Gas in keeping that open. Um, the second local item is the uh, proposition to, uh, well, not a ballot proposition, but our city council's proposal at the, uh, 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 for the county for public health councils. Um, we have a number of members that have come to us with huge opposition to this proposal that creates an entirely new and duplicative infrastructure um, for reviewing COVID responsiveness in businesses. It targets without saying which entities, 10 different industry groups. We assume that one of the biggest of those groups will be hotels. Um, it does indeed, as I mentioned, duplicate existing county health responsibilities. Um, and so it's not necessary and it creates an additional bureaucracy, an additional layer of expense, and it creates a bureaucracy that's not accountable to voters. It creates a separate bureaucracy um, and that is very one-sided and listens not to any of the employers as members of the proposed public health councils. Uh, so we have opposed that. Uh, we have two propositions, ballot propositions, uh, for your approval this morning. I would note that the chamber does take positions on ballot propositions. We have already taken some positions and as we get closer to the election, the chamber will release a list of the propositions that it has taken a position on with a brief explanation for each. The most key two elements of that to understand are that first of all, we do not take a position on all propositions. We first filter by looking to say, is this a business issue? There are many issues on the ballot that are not business issues. And we don't deign to get in to do social issues. We only do business issues. With that being said, the one that we knew was coming, and I want to remind everyone because it's so absolutely critical and the biggest one on the ballot from a business perspective is Prop 15. We are already on position as opposed to that. This is a reminder, the split roll tax to make commercial properties have their taxes increased to current market value would be devastating on business and just create enormous pass-through expenses to the public. Um, so I was very encouraged to see local polling. We need to talk to our neighbors, our friends, our coworkers, and get them to oppose Prop 15. The two items that are on your, uh, your list for this morning are Props 22 and 24. If you haven't heard about Prop 22, you've been hiding under a rock somewhere. Uh, this is the one that has um, just many millions of dollars of television advertising uh, going out there so that Uber and Lyft drivers uh, are not classified as employees under this new definition of what is and is not an independent contractor called AB5. Uh, the chamber has been opposed to AB5, our position in support of Prop 22 uh, and allowing these drivers uh, to retain their independent contractor status is consistent with prior chamber policy. Finally, Prop 24, this is an expansion of the privacy laws that just went into effect in January. Uh, a couple of things of note, this would be a substantial expansion of laws that we don't even know how they're playing out yet. So how about we let the dust settle a little bit first. 
Um, second of all, it's interesting to see the recommendation from the Public Policy Committee and the Executive Committee is indeed to oppose 24, which is a very interesting group of people in opposition where you have interesting bedfellows from across the spectrum opposed to 24. The ACLU, the League of Women's Voters, the California Nurses Association, all oppose 24, as does business. And uh, if you look at some of the editorials, even the couple of editorial boards that have supported have acknowledged that it is a very much flawed initiative, which is often the problem with the ballot initiative process. Good intentions, crappy writing. Um, and you can't pass flawed legislation. That's what the legislature needs to do. The ballot process is sometimes a problem that way. I'll very quickly read from the Mercury News and East Bay Times. This is simply the wrong way to try to go about setting an immensely complex issue. Vote no. Voters should reject this. Let's wait and see how effective the state's new online works. If it needs change, give this legislature a chance to fix flaws before taking another ballot initiative to the people. That's my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Voss. Um, I think given, given the topic of all four of these, it's probably prudent to take them individually and run through them, um, unless everyone feels that we can bundle them all together. It's kind of a difficult question to ask to a bunch of muted um, Zoom members, but- How about this? Is there any <laughs> board member you could take yourself off mute that would like to pull out any of these issues as a standalone? Just take yourself off mute and let us know. Okay, hearing none, you can bundle them. There you go. Okay, they are all bundled together. So do we have a motion to support the recommendations of the Public Policy and Executive Committee? Mark, there's a first. We have a second. Okay, great. We have a first and a second. Um, all those in favor? Any opposed? And abstentions? <laughs> Great, thank you very, very much. The motions pass. Um, I want to turn it back over to Christina. Um, and as I'm doing that, thank her and Chad and Kelly and all of the staff. Um, this change because of COVID has really been dramatic, particularly from a staffing perspective, being able to put on Zoom meetings that function and that allow both our members as well as our invited guests to shine. I think you guys have gone above and beyond in a very contracted amount of time to really set this chamber apart in its nimbleness, in its ability to evolve and really show just what its members do, who they are, and the enormity of the time that both you and our members take to study these issues, move forward, and really be a representative of our community that really shines a light on how great and integral we are. So thank you and all of the staff, um, and I will turn it back over to you. Thank you. I wanna take myself off speaker mode so I can look at all of you. Um, so I just want you to understand the annual meeting is really our intention. Um, not only is it something that we must do in accordance with our bylaws, but it really is our intention to make sure that you understand what is happening at the chamber. Um, as Joe said, we are a private nonprofit um, 501c6 business trade organization, and we do not exist without our partnership, our members, our sponsors. And so you play a critical role in our success. And, you know, I, I think someone else said it, we're like family. We are like family. I know I speak to many of you all the time, and we're always checking on each other, both from a business perspective, but as a personal perspective. Um, we support each other. We're a community. We're in this together. Um, I, I feel that. And I know I'm, I'm kind of chatting with some of you on the side while we're on this, just because I miss seeing all of you so much. And, and we're doing this virtually, and we'll continue to do it virtually. But, but the chamber is here for you. We are a phone call away. Um, it's just so nice to know that we have so many amazing partners. Um, and I know I see Rob Deku. Rob, I see you. He's calling in from Washington, people. Um, these, when you are a member of the chamber, while we have a geographic boundary, 
um, it's really about being involved in this organization and connecting with the people within this organization. And so I appreciate each and every one of you so very much. And thank you for your involvement and support. And anything that you need from us, let us know and we're here for you. I would like to take this opportunity um, to introduce two new board members. This is their first meeting and I'm super excited to have them. I'm um, the first one and Chad, I don't know if you see him, but Jonathan Miller from Papa John's. There he is. Hi, Jonathan. Do you want to say hi to everybody really quick? Good morning, everyone. How are you? Can you hear me? Yes. It's a pleasure to meet you all. Um, Christina and Chad, thank you for um, inviting me to this great group. And uh, I'm just, I've learned a lot this morning and been very uh, informational and I I come just with the spirit of positive energy um, innovative thought and um, the idea that I want to add and uh, of the LAX chamber so thank you for having me and uh, I hope to meet you all soon and talk more in the future thank you Jonathan and Jonathan um, my daughter loves Papa John's just so you know we go in there more than we probably should so thank you Jonathan for being there for us yeah. with pizza um, always um, thank you <laughs> Wonderful. And then we also have Melissa Williams from the Marina Del Rey Hotel. Melissa, I don't know if you're on, but if you would like to say hi, feel free. And we welcome you to your first board meeting. I know this is one that's probably a little more overwhelming. I swear as we move forward, they will not be like this. Um, <laughs> are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Hi, everyone. I'm so sorry. I'm in a position where I can't be on camera, but just love seeing everyone. I can't wait to get involved with the chamber and work hard and uh, you know, do everything that I can. This chamber is so dynamic and I'm just so excited. So thank you so much. Um, looking forward to working with all of you. Thank you, Melissa. And Melissa's with the Marina Del Rey Hotel and the wonderful Salt Restaurant. And we can't wait to have a mixer there when, when all this has passed us and we can celebrate together. Absolutely. Um, thank you so much. So I, I want to thank again our sponsors. And, and during this very interesting time, you know, you evaluate as an organization whether or not these virtual events have the same value as the in-person events. And when I reach out to the sponsors and when our team reaches out to the sponsors and they say, we are going to support you whether we're virtual and in-person. So I just want to thank again, Los Angeles World Airports, the Jollinger Family Charitable Foundation. Um, I want to thank uh, Lynx and the team over there. Thank you not only for building the amazing Automated People Mover, but for continuing to support this organization. Uh, Jerry Jen, who's a new board member. Thank you, Jerry, for stepping up to the plate. And of course, our wonderful partners at the Playa Venice Sunrise Rotary Club, who always has our back. And it's truly a partnership. Thank you to all of you that are on the call today. We love you. Um, thank you. And I know Commissioner Val Velasco from Los Angeles World Airports is on. Hi, Val. I just actually saw Val last night. So nice to see you again. Um, but it's so nice to have all of you um, participate with us. Uh, our organization um, and our staff, Chad, Kelly, and Judith, are really doing an amazing job of providing really strong virtual programming. And uh, Chad has created a new SBE program that helps our small business owners, a small business enterprise um, with our partner, Jack Ochoa, to get certified. And I want to also thank Ferns um, for sponsoring. Um, Lynx is now a sponsor of that program, as well as Kaiser Permanente. We really appreciate it. And our goal is to support our small businesses so that they can continue to find opportunities for revenue. And we make it really easy for them. So uh, Chad, thank you for putting that together. Thank you for everyone that has participated in that programming. Uh, Kevin talked about Leadership Academy 2.0, which I'm super excited about. I don't know about you, but I think leadership is one of the most important things that we can have during this time. And supporting each other. So to be, able, to be able to provide the next level of leadership, I'm very much looking forward to, and that will launch in November. Um, we're doing all virtual networking, all virtual meetings. Um, we have a diversity, um, inclusivity, um, and um, diversity, equity, and inclusivity, excuse me, committee that's analyzing how the chamber can adopt practices that make sure that we're supporting all uh, all businesses. And so I'm very much looking forward to the report on that, which will come out next month. We also have a reopening task force led by Ray Lamoth. And I know Rajmi is leading our DEI committee and Ryan Gales. Um, and we will analyze when it is safe for us to meet again and what protocols will be in place as we move forward. And then um, 
Last but not least, I just wanna thank each and every one of you on this call, our amazing board members. We have 35 board members in the chamber, so it is a big board, but they're all active and engaged, and it really is what makes our organization work. So I thank all of you board members for always taking the time um, for helping lead the way as we enter this very strange and challenging um, time in business, and all of our wonderful members for supporting this organization and being part of it. And that is my president's report for now. Uh, we are ahead of schedule, so you can start your day and be productive. I thank you again. I congratulate John Lawner. You're going to be amazing this year. We've given you a real challenge, and I know you're going to step up to the plate. Um, and also to Michael Demodio and Kelly King, um, to our new mayor, Charles Bassett, thank you so much. And to all of our members, have a wonderful and productive day, and thank you so much for your involvement. That's it. Have a great day.